This is a story about me. My name's Shrek, and I'm an ogre. Now everybody knows ogres like being alone, but my peaceful life was about to change. All the fairy tale folk in Duloc were under siege. The evil Lord Farquaad wanted to rid his land of all the magical creatures. He was paying a reward to the villagers to turn in fairy tale prisoners. Five shillings for the possessed toy. Take it away. Father, please! Don't let them do this! Next! Help what me. have we got? Among them was an old woman with a donkey. She claimed that the donkey could talk and she wanted to be paid. But the donkey was smarter than that. Hard to believe when you knew him. And he stayed silent. He had just about fooled everybody until he was hit by some magic fairy dust and started to fly. You might have seen a house fly, maybe even a super fly, but I bet you ain't never seen a donkey fly. When the dust wore off, the donkey hit the ground running. After a few steps, he smacked into the smelliest tree trunk he had ever seen. <laughs> the donkey looked up and found that the tree trunk was actually my leg. Oh, I. Now I expected the donkey to run away in terror. But this wasn't any old donkey, and he even seemed to like me. His name was Donkey, and he asked to stay with me. I felt sorry for the wee creature, and I took him back to my swamp. Although when we got home, I insisted he sleep outside. I was used to being alone and was not happy about having visitors especially annoying chatty ones. This is gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. However, Donkey was the least of my problems. Because Lord Farquaad had evicted all the fairy tale creatures and had sent them to live in my swamp. Needless to say, 2,000 cute creatures in my front yard did not make me happy. I was determined to go to Lord Farquaad and get my land back. Now, as it turns out, Lord Farquaad had troubles of his own. He wanted desperately to become King of Duloc. But in order for him to be a king, he needed to marry a princess. Princess Fiona. She's perfect. And the one he chose lived in a castle guarded by a big old ugly dragon. This was a tall order for Lord Farquaad, who was a little short on courage. <laughs> sure, he's not big. So I made a deal with him. I would rescue the princess and bring her back to Farquaad. And he would get all of the creatures out of my swamp. Soon, Donkey and I were off to rescue the princess and slay the dragon. Well, actually, sneak past the dragon, any road. It seemed like we were walking forever when we finally saw the castle. But we had to cross an old rickety bridge stretching over boiling lava. We made it across with no problem. Oh, I can't do this, just let me off right now. Apart from Donkey's fear of heights, I put on some knight's armor and we crept into the dark corridor. Unfortunately, we ran right into the dragon and we had quite a fight. That dragon sent me flying into the air, right through the roof of Princess Fiona's room. Leaving Donkey all alone to tame the dragon. And me to tame Princess Fiona. This beeth our first meeting. Should it not be a wonderful, romantic moment? But Donkey was in serious trouble downstairs. The dragon turned out to be a girl dragon. And she was kind of sweet on him. Track! With the princess in tow, I raced to save him. What a rescue if I don't say so myself. With some fancy footwork and some pretty amazing heroics, I grabbed Donkey and we were off to the races. Fiona cheered after we made it back over the bridge and onto safe ground. But then the most surprising thing happened. She wanted me to kiss her. <laughs> 
When Donkey and I stopped laughing, I decided to reveal my true identity. I took off my helmet and Princess Fiona, well, she was shocked. She had been waiting for a Prince Charming to rescue her. She wasn't too happy that I was an ugly green ogre. She wanted her prince and was set on getting him. So I told her I would take her to Farquaad whether she wanted it or not, which she didn't. So I carry Fiona over my shoulder. We walked steadily for the rest of the day. This is not dignified, put me down! I was determined to deliver Farquaad's bride as soon as possible. Then, that evening, we stopped for dinner by a mill, and something magical happened. I looked at the princess, and she gazed back into my eyes. It was very romantic, I must say. Until the sun set and Princess Fiona rushed into the mill. Donkey decided to help out and play matchmaker. So that night, he crept into the mill to talk to the princess. When he walked in, he got the shock of his life. Ah! The princess had transformed into an ogress. You ate the princess! This <laughs> is me. She told him she was suffering the effects of an evil spell that could only be broken by true love's first kiss. She begged Donkey not to tell anyone. Donkey told her not to worry, she'd be a great match for me, and I quote, because we're both ugly. Thank you, Donkey. But all she could think was ugly and princess just don't go together. Unfortunately, I was standing just outside the door where they couldn't see me, and I thought the princess was talking about me and not her own ugliness. I was heartbroken. The next morning, Princess Fiona was ready to tell me the truth. She walked out of the old mill and saw me stomping toward her. There's something I have to tell you. You don't have to tell me anything, Princess. It was too late. I thought Fiona didn't want to be with me and I had gone to get Lord Farquaad. Lord Farquaad and his army arrived to claim his princess. It was a terrible misunderstanding. I was mad at Fiona and she was mad at me. She agreed to marry Farquaad. I took one last angry look at Fiona, snatched the deed to my swamp, and stormed off in a nasty huff. I returned to the swamp and cleaned up the mess. But for the first time ever, I had no appetite. I was very depressed because I blew it with the princess. Then Donkey appeared. Donkey yelled at me for acting so mean. You're so wrapped up in Leia's onion, boy, you're afraid of your own feelings. We were in a totally dysfunctional relationship. It was obvious to Donkey that Fiona was crazy about me, and all I could say was how I never wanted to see her again. Now, Donkey had promised to keep the princess's secret, but I caught on quick enough. He convinced me to stop the wedding, but we had to hurry. Luckily, Donkey hadn't totally cut the strings with the dragon lady. So he gave her a whistle, and we took off for the castle. When we got there, we took a look inside and found that the ceremony was already taking place. That's when I ran in and stopped the show. I object! Lord Farquaad and Princess Fiona were stunned to see me. I gathered all my courage and revealed my feelings for Fiona in front of all of Duloc. At that moment, the sun set. A sudden burst of light and clouds of smoke shrouded Fiona. She began to transform. When the smoke finally cleared, a green ogress stood in her place. Farquaad's eyes grew wide with revulsion. Oh, it's disgusting! The wedding guests gasped in horror. The princess's spell was on. Farquaad ordered his men to kill me and lock up the princess for the rest of her life. But just in time, dragon and donkey broke through the window. All right, nobody move. I got a dragon here and I'm not afraid to use it. Dragon scooped up Lord Farquaad. Fiona turned to me and we kissed.
It was magic. A big mystical cloud scooped her off her feet and she glowed beautifully with lights and stars. She was transforming again. But when it all died down, I saw that she was still an ogre like me. The spell was broken. And Fiona had taken love's true form. Fiona and I married and Donkey threw a big old party with all the fairy tale creatures singing and dancing. I even sung a little, and I'm not too shabby, I must say. And that's what I call a happy ending. I was hoping this would be a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs>